a guy that we have uh, five people so far that have contacted us. Um, I'll, I'll read the, the names unless uh, they're Michael J. Van Zant, Bill McNicholas, Stephen Nestle, Jaru Hoyt, and Chris Malin in that order. Um, there is still an opportunity since you've seen the, the URL and the email on, on, on the screen uh, if you want to be added to that list. But um, first up is Michael J. Van Zant from Catholic Charities. Michael? Thank you very much, uh, Chairman McGrath. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. Thank you. Um, Chairman McGrath, uh, members of the board and uh, water board staff, I am Michael Van Zant, um, an attorney with Hanson Bridget here in San Rafael, and I represent Catholic Charity CYO of San Francisco. And the matter uh, that the Water Board has been involved with is at the St. Vincent's um, School uh, in uh, Marin County, um, and there is a history of uh, dry cleaning uh, facilities that have contaminated the groundwater, and I apologize for my clock chiming on you. Um, that uh, has been a, a known source of contamination since at least 2005, uh, was reported to the Water Board in about 2007. But the reason I'm coming before you today is because um, the Marinwood Plaza uh, LLC, who is the responsible party here for the cleanup, uh, has missed significant deadlines. Um, they have um, failed to make their quarterly reports for sampling, um, and they have inadequately reported on their progress to the water board. Um, you know, we are very concerned at Catholic Charities with uh, a corrective action plan that was approved by the, by the board that requires the cleanup to be concluded by 2027. Um, and the cleanup was supposed to have started in 2017, that there's been no progress at all in terms of the cleanup itself. Um, and uh, although there has been some pilot testing uh, done and, so, and a proposed remedial action plan that has actually been approved, uh, there has been no progress uh, in the last several years on actually cleaning up the site. Uh, this is giving us great concern. Uh, the uh, Catholic Charities folks who manage the St. Vincent's property are trying to develop that property, have been for a number of years, uh, but continue to, to do so, uh, and uh, having uh, contamination in the groundwater beneath their land uh, causes uh, great concern, and it also uh, potentially interferes with the development of the property. Um, so <clears throat> we have asked that the, uh, the Water Board put this on their agenda, the formal agenda for um, consideration in the not too distant future as soon as we can. I do uh, note that the, the Water Board has sent a notice of violation to Marinwood Plaza uh, for some of these failures that I just mentioned, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, we do appreciate the attention that Mr. Lambert and the, and the Water Board has applied to the situation, but um, we do believe that it's going to take uh, some more uh, attention and strong action by the Water Board to uh, keep the, the cleanup going and meet the deadlines that the Water Board has imposed. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. Uh, I, I'm sure you know that uh, the executive director's report, uh, executive officer's report does cover this. Um, so there is some limited ability that we might have to ask him questions when that comes up. So if you want to stick around for that, um, we'll be, we'll try to provide responses. But you probably also know that for, for something not scheduled for action, there is a very limited amount of discussion that we can uh, participate in. I understand that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, Bill McNicholas. Uh, I'm seeing a Kim McNicholas, so I'm going to promote th that as a, I believe it's close enough. And f for those of you making comments publicly, if you have a video feed um, on, on your Zoom, uh, you can put it on. Uh, I appreciate seeing people's faces. Um, 
a lot of information is imparted in body language, and I do appreciate that. Hey, you're, right, on mute. You, you're on mute. You, Bill, you are muted. Can the can the uh, I can also can, unmute. There you go. Okay, there we go. I'm not Kim, but I'm using my daughter's uh, paid-for Zoom service. Good morning, uh, Chairman McGrath, board members, executive officer, and staff. I am Bill McNicholas, Clean Up Marinwood Plaza Now Oversight Committee member. As you just heard from Mr. Van Zandt, Marinwood Plaza owners have failed to comply with district orders. As you may or may not be aware, there was a potential buyer seeking to acquire the plaza for, this has been going on for over a year. The buyer had the full support of the community to acquire and move forward. He was even as part of the purchase would take over the management of the demolition of the plaza and perform active remediation of the PCE and soil vapor. This active remediation of the PCE would eliminate the source of the plume uh, thereby that spreads across under the highway to the Silvera and St. Vincent properties and would expedite the cleaning up of those two properties. As I was told, the deal was close to closing in April. At the last moment, as advised, Mrs. Hoyt backed out of the deal. The potential buyer now has backed out also. I now turn this over to committee member Stephen Nestle for further comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up, we do have Jaru Hoyt, I apologize if I mispronounced that name, and you can certainly correct it. Uh, Miss Hoyt is no you? longer Miss Hoyt is no longer available to come on, so she she won't be coming on. Okay, good thing. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Michael for his report. Chair, uh, untrash sounds cool. We're going to have to look into that. Maybe uh, we have great staff events around around uh, organizations like that. So. Um, I'll start off by uh, highlighting a little bit about, you know, in the executive officer's report, we did have an item on prosperity cleaner. We had a number of speakers. Um, I think that uh, we're taking the matter very seriously. I'm uh, really proud that staff, you know, within a month of the failure to meet the deadline on the soils remediation uh, issued an NOV. Um, we're going to be following up with that. And of course, we'll be bringing um, an amended order back to the board uh, to make sure that the groundwater cleanup commences. It's always difficult um, with dry cleaners, often having not having well-resourced property owners or well-resourced, you know, business owners. But we can't uh, we can't let uh, these cleanups uh, continue to to be delayed. So um, I want to highlight that. I think most of you noticed it in the report. There were two items, uh, climate change related items, one in last month's executive officer's report um, around our Adaptation Atlas 2.0 efforts being led by our planning division with SFEI. We'll be, um, we've already scoped out some work to have them do some more uh, focused work in uh, um, Operational landscape units. These are more jurisdictional areas of bay uh, that um, are have certain types of sea level rise adaptation uh, that can be applied. That was the original effort, adaptation 1.0, adaptation Atlas 1.0. This is going to drill down a little further and identify specific solutions working with parties and working with the scientists at SFEI. And I'm I'm proud of the fact that we've also uh, sort of targeted disadvantaged communities in, in, in identifying those locations where we're going to be doing that additional work. We'll come back with more information. The other climate related thing I wanted to point out was in this month's executive officer's report, which is our participation in Bay Adapt. Um, uh, this effort by BCDC is gaining a lot of traction. It's got a hot, lot of leadership. I'm dedicating a lot of my personal time to the leadership group and we're dedicating a lot of our senior management team and staff to the work groups that are coming out of this. 
and um, we're really uh, trying to uh, lend effort to it to make sure that it's successful collaborative effort to advance uh, a framework for regional planning for and, and we're not you know capital P we're not in the planning business we don't have you know land jurisdiction authority but we clearly can influence it through the use of our regulations and I think that's the point here is to be the sort of stick that backs up the carrot that wants to encourage that regional planning framework to come to fruition so um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to bring some of the information that we get from that back on the board. And if there's any board members in particular that want to keep closer track of it, I can let you know about the meetings that they have. Most of them, of course, are online, so they're easy to participate in. Um, and then um, two, two other shout outs real quickly. I want to thank the NPDS program, Jessica Watkins and Bill Johnson for flagging the data on the SSO related, wipe, wipes related SSO problem when the executive officers report that data came in and they were really quick to say, hey, this is remarkable um, in that it really is data that shows the impact of flushable wipes or not really wipes that are not flushable. And so uh, I wanna thank them for flagging that data really quickly and putting that together in time for the board's consideration. And then lastly, we have some important milestones coming up on the Vineyard program. And um, that program has been a great success in terms of enrollment. And we'll be, of course, closely tracking the outputs. Enrollment is important, but the outputs are even more important. Uh, the farm plants themselves, as well as um, the monitoring and reporting that will show the results of the implementation of those farm plans. And uh, I think 2020, uh, with all of its challenges, will um, will actually be a real, uh, a real, a great year for the Vineyard Program in terms of us beginning to maybe start to see how we're going to see those results from that program. So I'll stop there um, and um, hand it back to the chair uh, for any questions. Are there any questions for Michael? I have a few questions about the Marinwood uh, Prosperity Cleaners uh, project. Um, one of the commenters earlier said that they were supposed to have started, the uh, owners were supposed to have started uh, work in 2017 and there's been no progress at all. Is that inaccurate? You know, uh, we should probably bring up Alec Noggle. Um, there was initially some excavation. Uh, the deadline in April was for a completion report that would have documented uh, additional work. I'll let Alec speak to that. That was the work that was not performed in terms of soils. And then Alec, if you could also address the delays in the groundwater program. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that, that is correct. The, uh, the remedial action plan was approved, I believe it was 2018. And to our knowledge, there has not been, for groundwater, there's not been, uh, and for soil vapor, there's not been any uh, progress on that plan. Um, the deadline that we mentioned was for a, uh, for a remedial action plan for the on-site soil vapor conditions. And I believe it was an excavation plan, additional excavation. There had been some prior to this, This area, so the work that has not that we approved that plan. It was not implemented. It was due. A completion report was due in March. That has not happened. Um, the groundwater contamination issue, uh, the offsite plume that migrates onto the other properties that you heard from earlier. That also there was a remedial action plan for that that was approved, and that has not been implemented. The order required cleanup in 10 years by 2027 and we have not received any information about the progress of that so uh, in fact there has been no progress and the executive uh, officer's report says that they failed to submit monitoring reports since july of last year um how often uh, is this are the sampling events and how frequently are they supposed to be submitted to the board 
the same Can I thing address of, that? Oh, yeah, Ralph, are you there? there. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to hand it off to Ralph Lambert, who's the project manager on this case. Right. So um, depending on which wells, they're supposed to submit quarterly sampling reports. Um, so the last one was due, you know, the end of, of April. Uh, um, they, they haven't sampled since last June. Um, yesterday, they did transfer some money to consultants. Uh, so the consultants are planning to be out there within the week to, uh, to do the sampling. I've been pushing them for a while, but there's significant cash problem. And is, it, is it the case that no sampling was done or no uh, sampling was done, but we didn't get the results? No sampling has been done since last June. And um, this sampling was intended to prove out the efficacy of the remedy, which, as I understand it, was implemented in part to test the technology, correct? Yes, there is a, a pilot test for the groundwater, and um, they've sampled uh, multiple times with that, and we were seeing progress. Uh, I, we, I would like to have seen more. Um, but, but the progress that we saw was only up and until last year, last July, and then they just stopped doing it. Is that right? Yes. And what is the significance of the notice of violation that we've issued? Does it bring with it immediate penalties? Does it just alert them and put them on notice that some additional action is forthcoming? What, what's the legal significance of what we've done now? Perhaps um, um, Yuri or, uh, would like to answer that. Yeah. Sure. Good morning, board. So yeah, it just puts the discharger on notice. Um, after which, if the discharger doesn't do anything, we refer it to the enforcement section, and then the enforcement section will evaluate the appropriate enforcement to take and bring it to the board. Obviously, there's no way for the discharger to make up for the failure to do the sampling going back in time, they can do the sampling now. Um, is there some automatic consequence that comes for the failure to do something that was integral to establishing the efficacy of the remedy that's been selected? I think that, yeah, so you can't um, do something that was in the past, um, so it will all be taken into consideration in assessing what kind of enforcement should be taken. And, and what's the timing on our part to act upon this notice of violation? So mm -hmm. in the notice of violation, we gave them till April 30th and then also August 31st to you know, submit the soil vapor completion report and also monitoring um, reports. And um, you know, after those dates, uh, you know, we will re refer to enforcement if nothing occurs. I'm sorry, April 30th of this year, uh, past, behind us. April 30th, yeah, this year, and then August 31st uh, for monitoring of this so year. They're already, and they're already in violation of that deadline, is that correct? I think, I'm uh, sorry, let me, I think uh, that's the not. Deadlines in the cleanup order. I think the due date for the, uh, Ralph, can you answer that? I thought it was August that we asked for the completion report and then July for the monitoring report. I, I know that's correct. It's August 31st for the on-site vapor monitoring report uh, uh, remediation and uh, July 30th for the, the next sampling report. And you said, if you don't mean the, we'll, we would refer it to uh, enforcement, but there's no automatic uh, enforcement. Uh, well, I guess I, you know, maybe I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but it seems to me there's no question but that there has to be some enforcement given the importance of that sampling data to validate the efficacy of the remedy. So it's not a question of whether, it's just a question of what. Sure. I'm, I'm going to try to rein this in a little bit unless Yuri tells me that I shouldn't. I want to make sure that we respect the due process requirements of something that goes into enforcement, but make it clear to the, to the staff that we are 
very concerned about this and, and we want to see um, you know analysis of what went wrong and and to start that process with a sense of urgency yeah and, and I'll stop asking questions I re that's really the ultimately the point I wanted to convey understood thank you thank you, thank you I, I, as a follow-up to this actually I'm so glad Bill almost asked all the questions I had which is he's always much better at asking those questions but um, I guess um, my concern is that as soon as this ended up in the executive officer report, that's when um, that's been that's when sort of some action was stirred up at the um, at um, uh, on the ground and make sure like you know the whole making sure there's some monitoring happening or some samples are collected. So I'm wondering, you know, I want to emphasize on what uh, at least that's what I thought Bill was getting into, which is. We need something a little bit more uh, forceful to make sure that they don't need, we don't need this to always come to the board to make sure that they're making an action. We want to make sure they are actually actively dealing with this and meeting all their deadlines. Um, I mean, this, I, I just could not believe my eyes, to be honest with you, when I was reading this and we were talking about 2014. For some, you know, time flies, and we have been. It, this has been going on for a long time, and uh, you know, and um, and I think we need to make sure. I mean, uh, something is going to happen on the ground, and this remediation will continue on, and this cleanup will happen. Um, so that's that is my personal concern. So I think I want to reemphasize that we need something more. Uh, sort of like an automated way of making sure that they will do their what's required from the permit rather than playing through the process and not doing what they have to do. I mean, last June, we were talking about almost a year. They haven't been doing anything. Jim, uh, I, I just want to jump in and, and tell Jim, I'm watching the hand raising and you've got Andrew, Alexis, and then me. So, uh, just just to give you a heads up on that. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew. I was going to take us off this topic, so I would I would push myself down the list if anyone else wants to talk more about this issue. Next next would be Alexis. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. I. Uh, I share Bill and Nusha's concern, although I don't have the history of this, but it certainly fits um, a pattern that we've all seen in our professional lives of where something is no longer being sufficiently capitalized to achieve what is required here. I am wondering, rather than us as a board coming to the August timeframe and finding that those reports are not ready or sufficient to meet with um, the management team's um, needs and expectations. It would be very helpful um, to know, for example, in the next month, um, that the requisite field work that would inform those reports is being done so that there is something to write a report about um, come the August deadline. So if we could just, um, in whatever way makes sense, Mike, for you and the management team, if we could know that the um, responsible party is doing the requisite field work that would inform uh, the reports that are due, we would have a sense of progress than getting to inform a report. Thanks. And Jane. I was going to... Whoops. Yeah, I was going to take us off in another topic as well. So I'll see if I want to defer to anybody else who wants to speak to this. And I'll just say I'm supportive of everything on this topic of uh, Marinwood that's already been said. Hi, this is Alec. I just want to reply and say uh, in the in the executive office report, so no mention of our um, our our um, acknowledgement that we need to update the order. And uh, we haven't quite set the time frame from that, but we're trying to move on that as, as quickly as we can to address some of the, the issue of progress in particular on the, uh, the downgrading, um, the offsite uh, groundwater issue. 
Alex, uh, let me just ask, I, I'm going to go against what I said before, but I'm just going to ask one more question. Um, the work is supposed to all be done under the remedial action uh, plan uh, by 2027, I believe. Is that, uh, is that still achievable at this point or is, it, is, or, or is this going to slip now by some amount of time? So there, there, there are two pieces, uh, Bill, to get back to your original question of has there been cleanup? So on the soils piece, there was an initial round of excavation. That excavation was found inadequate. The follow-on excavation has not occurred. That was supposed to happen by the end of April. That's the soils and vapors, right? The groundwater is the 2027 deadline. And I think that there's, uh, there's always a lot of uncertainty in predicting the effectiveness of groundwater remediation and the time frames to restore groundwater. Clearly the 2027 date, um, you know, is the longer, the longer the injection, which is the follow on from the pilot effort uh, is delayed, uh, the longer the timeline that we would expect to see restoration. Um, but it's really hard to say whether specifically 2027 is uh, a, still a viable date without the benefit of the monitoring, which hasn't occurred, and the further injection of the um, of the the substrate that reduces the the concentrations of the solvents. Does that make sense? Yes, and of course the excavation as well, which is the source of the contaminants into the groundwater. C correct. Uh, this is Lisa McCann, Assistant Executive Officer. I just wanted to add that the focus of um, updating the order is because the um, Existing order doesn't effectively require ongoing monitoring to demonstrate the effectiveness of the groundwater cleanup actions that have not yet been initiated, which is a problem. But even if they had been initiated, we don't feel that the order going forward has adequate um, evaluation and reporting to help us gauge how close to 2027, how, how, whether or not we can meet that goal for 2027 and what's reasonable related to that projected date. And that's really important to make sure that this cleanup happens and that it happens efficiently. So Lisa, can I ask a question, Jim? Uh, so Lisa, is, um, so are you saying that the, the next move for us needs to be to tighten the permit and make sure that we are, um, um, we are, um, uh, hopefully we can achieve this earlier than later. Is that the idea to kind of like make the timelines and the reporting and the um, fall on action, uh, you know, a little bit more, um, I guess, actionable and that we can sort of keep an eye on it? Or is this, is that achievable? Is that something that we need to kind of do or? Yes. Okay. Yes, and we are doing that, and um, I just want to say that um, we're, we're essentially doing two things in parallel, pursuing um, communicating clearly about the violations and consequences of those violations in terms of prospective enforcement actions and evaluating that as well as trying to improve this order so that the long-term um, cleanup efforts, that we're tracking it effectively and are more likely to get an outcome. And would it be possible to, to achieve the 2027 20, uh, through the process and still keep that deadline? I just want to see, uh, are there any actions that we can take that we can achieve that deadline and not postpone I'll just it? I'll go back to what Mike said a few minutes ago. I think we, aren't, we can't guarantee that but we at least want to have our requirements set up in a way that we can push it as much as possible and track whether or not we're, um, we, under, we can share our understanding about the extent to which we're getting closer or where, whether we need to push it out and what's reasonable there and what the and risks this, of that are. And this goes back to the comment that they had earlier about the financial issues and, uh, and the sales of the uh, property. And does that, um, I guess I'm trying to figure out how we can disconnect our order from the financial issues that are happening. 
on the ground um, just to make sure that Nisha, I, I don't want to get too far into what are arguably <laughs> yeah. enforcement okay, yes. issues. Yes, so sure, uh, sure. I, I want to wrap this up. It's fairly clear that the entire board is very concerned about this. Um, I, I'd like to quote a, a line that I once heard from Jay Davis, which I think is important and I think provides a little direction to the staff. Uh, I'm sure that Jay didn't originate it, but he was the first person that, that I heard it from. When the kitchen is flooded, turn off the taps before you start mopping. And um, I, I'm very impressed with the board's recollection of this, particularly Bill Kissinger's. I mean, that was kind of, we remember this very clearly. And the mechanism to shut off the taps was the excavation. Now, it's not entirely all bad news. The when we finally were convinced to uh, approve a, a remedial action plan, we had seen a very substantial excavation, which had identified and stopped some of the uh, the, effort, the the material that was was going down gradient, um, and it, it was partially successful. The reason for more excavation was it wasn't completely identifying those areas contributing to downstream. So very clearly, that is the priority. Um, and we need to get that done. Um, what then gets done about the delay and what's reasonable um, probably is a matter that, that we should wait a little bit for the staff to assess uh, progress. Um, this wasn't the most aggressive groundwater treatment uh, system in the world. Um, it, it did have promise, uh, but, but but I sure like to get that excavation completed. Uh, it, it, that that seems to be the the highest priority step, and then uh, deal with this in an enforcement mechanism so that the landowner has an opportunity to uh, you know provide their part of the story. 